Hi everyone, uh, it's Raven with Co-op the Podcast. Just kind of giving you a little heads up. This episode is slightly grainy and pretty echoey and overall shitty, but I'm going to blame it on the Dominican Republic. So enjoy this episode, but know that we're working on our audio quality um, and hopefully uh, it'll be better next episode. Thanks so much, guys. Bye. That's better. It's been a while. Yeah. But we're back. Howdy. I'm your host, Jesse. And I'm your host, Raven, drinking a nice black cup of coffee while the rest of my diet swirls right down the toilet because I have no self control anymore. <laughs> yeah, vacations are rough. I don't recommend them, they just ruin your life. Uh, well, let's talk about our vacation later. Let's get through the intro of our podcast. How about, um, welcome to Call of the Podcast. Uh, if you're new here, we are a podcast that discusses everything from gaming to TV and film to football to whatever yeah. the fuck yeah. we want. A lot of cooking. Yeah. A lot yeah. of cooking, a lot of baking, a lot of fitness. Yeah. Um, and so, basically, one of the reasons why we call it Co-op the Podcast is because these are things that Jesse and I do co-op. Yeah. Like, we do these together. And co-op with, IRL. Yeah. In real life, buddies. Um, and so, throughout this podcast, you'll get all these different things that we just really like to talk about. Uh, sometimes we'll neglect a few subjects for a little bit. Uh, like, we haven't had a... Had a gaming episode in a really long time, but they're coming. What do you mean by gaming? We did D and D last episode. Well, I mean video games. Yes. We'll do one it's soon, good. guys. I promise. What's um, a good video game? Anybody got any? Let us know. Yeah, to play any new ones. Because the last game I played uh, that I enjoyed really immensely, at least, was Kingdom Hearts. Yeah, that's the last one I and think we played. And we're waiting played. on Borderlands. Borderlands Three, which I actually really want to stream playing. The first Borderlands yeah. and the second Borderlands and the pre-sequel and uh, Tales from the Borderlands because I actually, I actually haven't played that. So. I did hear um, in video games that Minecraft is now the number one game of all time. And I play that a lot. Yeah, so. Jesse plays that so much. Do you guys want a Minecraft episode? We do have some Minecraft news later in this episode. Oh, okay. Well, so, then there we go. Yeah. So uh, stick around for that. Yeah. But yeah, so we talk about uh, all sorts of random stuff, so uh, if you're having a hard time kind of keeping track, uh, it's because you're an idiot. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. <laughs> uh, but in reality, it's because we talked about a bunch of random shit. Yeah. Um, anyways, so since we were gone on vacation, again, we came out with two episodes, and we also started a contest. A t-shirt contest, where we give away a t-shirt every week, and... We, we have our first one. We have our first winner. Um, I meant to write down her Instagram handle, but I forgot, and I left my phone upstairs. But her name is Madeline Williams, um, and she won the first week on Instagram. So yes. be sure wherever you're, um, whether you're doing it on Facebook, on Twitter, on Instagram, uh, just keep interacting with us. Right. And the way the contest works is if you comment, like, um, share. And you're following that page. If you're just liking it then unfor- and commenting on it and you're not following your page, unfortunately, you can't win. Uh, but for every interaction, you're entered into that drawing. Right. So you can get multiple chances to win. Go yep. all over the place. Uh, as long as you're not abusing the system and leaving, like, you know. No, don't comments. spam us. Yeah, I would rather you more. not spam us. Uh, but yeah, you know, so you can you can get a lot of chances to to win a nifty t shirt. Yeah, a super cool t shirt, and eventually we'll also like change it up, and maybe one week we won't give away a t shirt. Maybe we'll give away a tabletop game or a uh, maybe a different t shirt. Who knows? Who knows? Who knows? You gotta stick yeah. around for that. So yeah, Madeline Williams, she won our first time. Congratulations, buddy. 
Um, so yeah, and we'll announce last week's. That was the winner from two weeks ago. We'll la- or announce was, yeah. la or yeah last week's winner in the next episode. Right. Yeah, and then we'll start getting into the cadence so Raven doesn't stumble over. <laughs> I don't know what is time. It's all yeah. relative. Wibbly uh, wobbly, timey wobbly. Yeah, but it'll be every week. As soon as the latest podcast kind of comes out, it resets the clock, right? Yeah, yeah, every Tuesday the clock is reset. If I can turn back time. Now we gotta pay royalties. We should probably. Mm. I think it's like seven seconds or something. Yeah. You get seven seconds. Okay. <laughs> uh, Cheer, anyways. if you come for us, I'll take your ass out. Yeah, our Patreon is still up, patreon.com slash co op the podcast. Yeah. Um, we are still uh, waiting for more people to join us mm-hmm. uh, so we can start doing some behind the scenes videos and things like that. We do yeah. do. Um, uh, we do do. do. <laughs> <laughs> uh, we are very active in our. Um, what's that thing? Our Discord, our Discord channel. Yeah. yeah. Uh, we're very active on Discord. We, you know, give away some t-shirts and things. To yeah. Our when you, when you backers. join the Patreon, you get backer gifts. So that could be t-shirts. That could be like discounts on all merch. That could be, I don't think pop sockets are a thing. Handwritten we postcards. Yeah. We write handwritten postcards and they're so nice. Yeah, we send that. You get priority um, on like Q and A's, which we're gonna do a Q and A soon, and then we're gonna post it directly onto the Patreon first. Cool. Yeah. Yeah. So you know, there's some some benefits there, uh, and we're hoping to expand those benefits as soon as we get more people. So go there, click yes. on it, uh, and then we will start doing videos Give us so some you can nice. see us do this. If you're ever yeah. wondering what we're doing right now with our hands, holding them in T pose. While we talk, you could see it live. Because T Rex claws. No, T pose is this. What is T pose? Oh, bye. It's like a Fortnite thing, right? I don't know. I don't play that game. No offense to anyone that does. Yeah. But you're stupid. Mm, I'm kidding. <laughs> Uh, but yeah, so go follow us. Patreon.com slash co op the podcast. Or not follow us. Back us. Back us. You could go as little as I think. However the fuck much you want. So for the yeah. cost of a cup of coffee a month, you it's could get cup coffee. coffee an hour. <laughs> you could support us and uh, help me quit my job. I hate it there, guys. I hate it so much. And I like you guys better. Uh, so what else do we have? We have called the, co- the, 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 the Go up, up the podcast podcast dot com. <laughs> Which is uh, for, blog for blog content. Which, uh, Which we are updating. We're trying. We're trying really hard, you guys. We're still in vacation mode, too. It's like, so I cannot yeah. wake up. We'll Vacation's talk about vacations. Because then you don't want to come back from vacation. No, I never. You sunburn, you eat too much, and you just lay around all the time. Yeah, that's it's very like, specific uh, to ours. You eat way too many nachos, and you maybe shit your brains out a couple of times because you drank the water on accident while brushing your teeth. That wasn't me, though. Yeah, uh, other specific people. other people. <laughs> uh, so yeah, vacations suck. But you know what doesn't suck? Our blog content. So head on over to Co-op. And vacations are awesome. Take a yeah, vacation take a can. vacation, please. Uh, we're just joking around. We love vacations. Too Do much. we, Jesse? Do we? Too much. <laughs> uh, but yeah, so we're going to get that updated. Um, but we are working on right now. So, you know, one of our, our most popular blog posts and you know, one of our most popular episodes uh, is all episodes. around the D and D Beyond character creation process. So we started capturing some, you know, screenshots and things like that, and we had the idea of coming up with our co-op the podcast mascot. Yeah, D and D character and mascot. Yeah, so he's going to be our D and D character. We're going to build him out. Uh, mm-hmm. We're going to use him for all our little tutorials. That we're building for yeah. D&D Beyond, and, and we're going to. Uh, he might also appear in some real play episodes exactly. whenever we come out with those. Exactly. So cool. So, do you want to do the announcement of? Uh, so we did a poll. Right. We asked you guys who you wanted Coop, Coop the is his name. the co of the podcast C-O-O-P. mascot cool. to be, and we randomly selected like gender and stuff like that. So he identifies yeah. as male he based does. on that. 
random algorithm. Uh, but we asked you guys to pick the race and class. It, was it wasn't a coin. I did it online. <laughs> Um, so you guys voted and you decided you wanted a dragonborn wizard, which was so surprising. I didn't really expect it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. At least a dragonborn. I don't know. I kind of expected people to go dragonborn. I, I expected have the, I have tiefling. The opinion of, oh, yeah, or tiefling. I have the opinion that everybody really wants to do dragonborns or tieflings. Uh -huh. uh, so, you know, it's popular. I was hoping for a dwarf. Yeah, I don't know why. A dwarf wizard. Yeah, I wanted a half orc, but I don't know what class. Yeah, maybe a wizard. But I'm happy with the dragonborn. I am too. I think it'll be great. I always and wanted a wizard. Wizards are the best. Yeah, they're nerds, which we are too. So we're working with some artists uh, to get that set up. We're actually going to also work on the uh, background and the. Just the make of the character in general from, like, level one. And we'll also post that onto our blog. Yeah, um, we'll put everything up there so you can use Coop in your own... Uh, game if you want if to. If you want to, yeah. Um, Raven, Raven likes to make characters. So we'll, we'll probably start putting all her characters up there as, like, you know... Yeah, I'm actually going to start... I did a poll a couple of weeks ago asking uh, people to help me make a D&D &D character. Um, and you guys showed up and you did it i haven't posted it yet but i'll i'll do that i'll post that sometime this week or next week or uh the summer months <laughs> and you guys will be able to use that character as well she was a i think a halfling uh wizard archaeologist and it was a really cool build so i'll definitely post that in the world yeah but yeah so keep an eye out for all that um Again, yeah, we're coming back from vacation, we're tired and lazy, so yell at us on social media if you want us to be more proactive, but yeah. we're going to try. We uh, try really hard. Yeah, so uh -huh. what, what, what else? What else? Okay. Yeah, uh, no, so this particular episode, because we were out for two weeks, we missed a lot, a lot in the world of hotcakes, so... Welcome to the co-op, The Diner, as we serve you some delicious hotcakes as our theme like we did two yeah, weeks and ago. We play ketchup. And we play ketchup. We we take that ketchup. It's one of those really crappy bottles that don't have the squeeze top. You got to like hit the bottom. That's uh, the ketchup that we're working on. We're working yeah, with the glass them. bottles. The glass bottles. Yeah. They suck. Those are, no, those are nice when you go to like a restaurant and you're like, specifically okay, a diner. Yeah. <laughs> you know. It's like, uh, I'd eat at a diner every day if I could. Me too. I, I, I want to be, what's that show we watch where they in live? Terms of Engagement, yes. I think. No. I want that. Is it? Yeah, it is Terms of Engagement. That might have been it, yeah. Where they were like, you know, and they go every time. day, like multiple times a day to this diner that seemed to serve all sorts of types of food. Uh, it was pretty good. Or yeah. Seinfeld. Or, I don't know, any number of things. Yeah. Not friends, because obviously we hate friends, but they lived uh, close to a cafe. I coffee don't want a, yeah, I don't I want want a coffee shop. Diner. I want a diner. I want some eggs, hash, hash browns, browns yeah. pancakes, sandwiches. I love sandwiches. Yeah. We've gained like a hundred billion pounds, which is definitely so what's happened. walk everywhere because we are living in New York. In New York, right? yeah, which would, I mean, it wouldn't suck. We were thinking about moving to New York for a little bit, right, but right. yeah. But yeah, you know, we'd walk everywhere, so we'd lose some weight. Yeah. That would actually be pretty nice. Yeah. Uh, so, yeah. Anyways, back to hotcakes. Only hotcakes. Yeah. Only hotcakes this episode. We literally, I think we have like 15 hotcakes to get you through the week until next week when we maybe have a theme. <laughs> oh, yeah. We'll have a theme next week. It's, but we're really behind on hotcakes. We need to catch up with what's going on. Mm, catch up. Uh, yeah, don't we, let, don't, let, let's I'm not, not doing the ketchup, ketchup again. again. <laughs> yeah. Catsup versus ketchup, what's the difference, right? I think it's like sugar content. One is just tomato and water. I don't think I've ever had catsup. Sugar, I think because it's just tomato and water. But why, that sounds like a, tom, like, a, like a tomato sauce, like a red sauce for a pasta. That's basically, yeah. But also you don't put water in that. Oh, you put pasta water. Uh, yeah, I, I think like, you know, there's water somewhere in there. I don't know. But that's what catsup versus ketchup is. Is it's just like the addition of like sugar, basically. Mm, okay. Yeah. Ketchup is good. Yeah. Catsup sounds like butt. Yeah. 
No. Yeah. Uh, anyways, so our first hot cake. Yeah, so this week uh, we heard a rumor. It's still technically only rumored uh, that Robert Pattinson is going to play the new Batman. Right. So yes. Batman in what now as well? In some movie? What movie? What does he play Batman in? Uh, they have not announced just the new Batman. He's going to take over the role as Batman. Oh, I thought they said some movie, too. No. Okay. The well, Batman. It, to play the Batman and Matt Reeves' new film. The uh, one that... they just said it was by Matt Reeves. Gotcha. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I, I thought they had that named... serial... Or, su- su- not serial killer. A superhero film, which hits theaters June 25th, 2021. Yeah, I thought they had maybe named the movie, because I was going to say, like, in what capacity, because, like, okay, so here's my thought on this whole thing, is, like, uh... Well, people are, first of all, well, like, you're getting your thoughts together, uh, first of all, people are pretty upset, for some weird reason, that the Robert Pattinson is playing Batman, because I think a lot of people are trying to focus in on the fact that, I mean, he was Edward Cullen in Twilight, and people are, like, all up their asses about that. Yeah, it's one of his most favorite or famous roles. Um, and so people are like freaking out a little bit. A lot of other people are like, you guys are just being babies and like showing images of him. And I think it, the movie's called Cosmopolis, um, where he's like in a suit and he's like super dapper and a little bit more Batman y. But I'm going to say um, those particular movies did not rate very highly on the International Movie Database. So I'm still a little concerned. I think his best role was obviously Cedric Diggory. That's my uh, <laughs> problem, I guess, is, like, the whole thing is I don't see him as, like, an A-list actor who's, like, really good at acting. Yeah, all of his most recent films, too, have been um, movies I've never seen before or really even, like, heard of. So I was kind of a little bit surprised. Uh, but maybe they're trying to bring his career back. Maybe they're like, hey, let's get somebody who's not in the spotlight right now to come in and play this Batman because there was all this kind of backlash really after Ben Affleck was playing him right. so maybe this is their way of kind of making up for that right um but so okay here's my my layout now that I've looked at this because what I did is I pulled up some pictures of him and I got his age because this is my st- my sticking point is like you know I, I guess if it's a earlier story in Batman's career uh it would kind of stick but he looks a little, little young he's 33 he looks a little younger. our age ish. Yeah. <laughs> to play yeah. the bat. I think, in my opinion, Batman should be like an older looking character. More like 40s. Mm-hmm. Right? Somebody who can kind of maintain that, like, you know, I've been doing this for a long time. I got a lot of expertise, you know, mm-hmm. rough detective kind of feel. Uh, and I don't think he has that. Yeah. On Twitter right now, people are saying what they want is they want another... People are pushing for Batman Beyond. And so what they want is Robert Pattinson to play... What was that character's name? Terry McGinnis. Terry McGinnis. And they want Michael Keaton, who played Batman in the Tim Burton films, uh, to... er, I always use this word and I still don't know how to say it. Reprise, reprise, whatever. uh, His role as Batman. Yeah. I actually think that would be better. Like, yeah. if, if he's playing Bruce I so Wayne, too. I think we miss the mark. Again, it might be, an, like, a young story, so maybe... You On International Movie it. Database, somebody did put in Bruce Wayne, but it still says rumored, so... Right. But it is only rumored, because uh, there is another person that is up for the role as well, and that's uh, Nicholas Holt, who you may know as... Uh, Hank McCoy, or Beast, in the new X-Men series, uh... And he's also playing J.R.R. Token in the Token biopic. Um, and he was in a bunch of other stuff. Yeah, so actually this guy looks a little bit... I mean, he's young as well. Like, Yeah, so he's like legit thing. our age. Yeah, it, my thing with Nicholas Holt, I guess, too, would be the same problem that I have for Robert Pattinson. Now, if I'm looking at both of them side by side, though, Rob Pattinson here... Which just said Rob, that's why I said it in this first one. That's weird. Uh, has a better chin for Batman. Because you know, all that's going to be shown is going to be his chin. chin. Yeah, he's got a much more square jaw, and he's got like almost a hint of a cleft, right? Eh. Very Batman. Like, I don't think. Nicholas Paul th- has just like a round chin. I think that his chin is fine. 
Uh, I don't think that that's really. Uh, that's oh, important. That's that. not. Yeah, the that's, is very no, I think that. as an I actress, you know, is. CGI is so great right now. They can Photoshop. They they can no. CGI a chin on there. But I think for Nicholas Holt, he has a much better um, kind of range of films that he's been in recently that are just super good. I mean, he, he was. Be a better actor, yeah. Yeah, because I just watched The Favorite on the flight home from from the Dominican Republic, and he's in that, and he's so good in that. He was one of the ones in that that I thought was just really a standout. He was so funny um, and just a really interesting character, but he's been in Mad Max. Obviously, he's been in X-Men. He's been in uh, that movie where he's a sentient zombie. <laughs> I can't remember what that one's called. Uh, Warm Bodies. He was in Warm Bodies. Um, so he's been in a couple more things that I've heard of more recently. So, but it is bridging kind of the DC Marvel kind of superheroes on two sides uh, roles because he plays Hank McCoy, right. which is beast if you don't know. If you don't know, you nerds. Yeah, I don't know. I don't know uh, what's going to happen with it, uh, but it's interesting. It's an interesting. Yeah. I'm uh, totally fine with Robert Pattinson playing exactly. it, it too. Really yeah, because a lot of people are kind of comparing it to. People were pissed off when Heath Ledger played the Joker. Everybody brings that up as Heath Ledger playing the Joker. Like, people didn't want that. Um, and he came, he was so great. And I think that that's just, you right. could apply that and let's, formula like, to a lot of different roles in movies when people are like, man, I don't want this person to play this role. And then it turns out to be a really good ch like choice. Right. And then, like, the Christian Bale kind of more origin story of Batman where he was, like, younger, right? was actually pretty good, too. Yeah, it was so. really good. I do, I, but if they're going to make another one of those, why? Like, they yeah, have I kind of like, think they need to go back to the formula where, you know, back when George Clooney was Batman. And, that kind of, like, it's yeah. out, it's not out of nowhere, but it's he's already established. within the Batman history. I agree. Right? Because if you do an origin story, you're like, okay, well, here, sign up for four or five movies, right? Because, like, it takes a long time at to least. tell that story. If yeah. you just drop them in at the tail end of the whole thing like with uh you know batman versus superman uh that whole tale was like he don't even beat joker and everybody right like yeah he was a dark old batman who was like facing his final oh, challenge man, of making sure that superman didn't you know erectile dysfunction batman yeah. so like that was the actor's problem right yeah is it was like the end so we didn't know this character mm -hmm. but yeah if you just drop in at the middle Here's what I think. Do we need another Batman movie? No. Do we need a Batman Beyond movie? Absolutely. Well, I think we need both. I think that I think, I think, I think that they should take a break. And then this is what I said you when they brought they Ben Affleck and they, they need to take a break. They need an actor, like I said, they need an actor who can age up. Then they so they need to find an actor who's an appropriate age right now, 40-ish. They need to come out with a movie. Movie one. Mm-hmm. Right? Whatever it is is an intro movie to this character as Batman. Then movie two is that guy's old now, right? We use some movie magic, age him up, right? And he retires. That's what happens in the, like, the beginning of Batman Beyond is Batman goes on like his final mission and it's like, huh, oh, I'm too old, right? Uh -huh. He does that. And then Batman, you know, Beyond intro. That's the second movie. Then the third movie is full blown Batman Beyond movie where he comes into his own right, right, and you know, mm -hmm. Bruce Wayne goes away. So we need somebody to play Bruce Wayne in a movie that can become old Bruce Wayne in movie number two and number three. Yeah. Same actor. Yeah, yeah. Right. So maybe somebody can age down for movie one. Yeah, I think that that might be a little bit easier. Men age down a little bit. Yeah. Better. Yeah, and like you know, maybe wearing a mask a lot of the time, right? You could like. Yeah. yeah Keanu Reeves. Yeah. Let's just make Keanu Reeves back. Keanu Reeves. A young Keanu Reeves would have been the perfect Terry McGinnis. Perfect Terry McGinnis. Yeah. That would have been so good. Would have been super awesome. But yeah. whatever. All right. Anyway, let's, let's move, move on. on. <laughs> we talk about Batman a lot. Yeah. Yeah. It was um, a good conversation. Yeah. Grumpy Cat died. Yeah. yeah. Grumpy Cat died this week, a.k.a. Tartar Sauce. I remember when... He came, came up. Yeah. When he hit that meme became a thing and all you would get was like old women in an office and they just like sent you grumpy cat memes. Ugh, it was a good time. Good yeah. time to be How alive. How old was he when he died? You 
Um, I don't know that per se. I it's very rude to ask a cat's age. It's probably I mean, so I think the specific breed that he is, it's like a munchkin breed. I don't think that they live very long. Yes. Uh man, okay, so I actually thought he was around much longer. He died at the age of seven. Yeah. I think that Grumpy Cat was only around for a couple of years. I think it was like two. Yeah, I just thought it like happened a lot longer time ago. Like I would have said like, oh, it must have been like, like 10 years ago that, yeah. that became popular. But it, no, does it must feel have like been 10 like years six ago. Six years ago or five years ago. That it In the popular. 2010s. Oh, yeah. God. Yeah, that's, a, that's awful to think about. In the grand scheme of my life. Yep. Yeah. Fucking old. Carter born in 2012. Dang. All right. Well, so R.I.P. Tartar Sauce, uh, your grumpy Bummer. persona will be greatly missed. Not that he's been really in that popular lately. Yeah, no, no, no. But yeah, it's always sad when somebody's cat dies. So. I know. I would be, I mean, yeah. devastated. Bummer for whoever the owner was, for sure. Uh, mm-hmm. You know, and I'm sure uh, there'll be plenty of other grumpy cats in the world, though. Hopefully they uh, bred, who you knows. Oops. I just hit my mic. But well, anyways, death is death. It happens to the yep, best of us. Yep. Remember, this is a death positivity podcast and uh, everything dies. Yep. And Deal with your own mortality. Don't dwell on it. No. Nope. All right. Sony and Microsoft have partnered to focus on improving cloud gaming, streaming, and more. Let's, let's, let's talk to. about it. <laughs> All right. So. Basically, what's going on is that thing that we talked about the other day where Microsoft was like, oh, yeah, I'm super into the idea of cross-platform gaming. Right. And then we were like, well, Sony has to buy into it. Well, guess what? They did. Uh, right. So this is, they've announced that they are sharing some investment I think it has to do with a back te- technical backend. Yeah. Do you know what that technical backend is? No, it's a cloud it? solution. Yeah, it is a cloud solution on Microsoft's Azure platform. Hey. Like uh-huh. <laughs> but, so, yes. yes. Uh, it's so, they, they bought into it together. But that still does not mean that we are going to straight up have this beautiful world where you can play cross-platform. Yeah, right. It definitely is like the door is open. But... You know, I, I've been a long, long time fan of how Microsoft does things with the gaming world because they seem very open to the idea of all this stuff. And they've been talking about it for a long time. They talked about it in the past for sure. Uh, because, like, they see that they can make money. Sony and Nintendo, right, those kind of old legacy, if you will, gaming platforms before right. the Xbox came out are afraid. Because they lost, they lost that, market share. That's a big claim. Afraid. Right. They lost. They lost market share. They're afraid that they're going to lose what they have if they kind of embrace the future. Microsoft is like, nope, we'll make money anyways. Because here's the future. We are the They're future. Everybody. The future is like everybody will be playing on PCs. There won't be consoles. Microsoft's like, hell yeah, brother. Because we sell. <laughs> what do we sell? <laughs> desktop operating system. Man. Hell yeah, let's do that. We make money there too. And Sony's like, wait, 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 wait. What? (laughs) Wait a second. I don't sell that. So, you know, yeah, while this is definitely, I feel like they can't fight the tide forever. So I think this is more of a kind of signal that Sony is starting to relent, if you will, on the idea of this and that they're willing to kind of try it out. Um, You know, especially with the rise of all these pay five dollars a month for access to this and that and this you know subscription yeah. services right yeah yeah i'm thinking that this new model maybe somebody in the background is trying to put together between the two is like pay a subscription service and be able to play with playstation and they get half the money and microsoft gets half the money and everybody will be happy and like somebody's like okay yeah maybe you know we can do that so uh so awesome you know great Let's see how how it develops over time for sure. Yeah. I think Sony's going to be fighting tooth and nail the entire time, so that's going to take a while. All right. So speaking of Microsoft, uh, another thing, they're coming for Pokemon Go's kind of uh, hold on the AI mobile market, uh, and they've announced that they're coming out with Minecraft Earth. It looks really cool. Have Have you seen much of it, babe? 
No, I haven't seen any of it. Okay, uh, so there's a link in the notes. So go ahead and click that link. So basically what you can do in this game is it's a mobile game. Do you want a larger penis by taking a pill once a day? You do. Yeah. You don't. Okay. Uh, this is the ads, though. <laughs> click on it or no? Yes? No? Uh, yes? Uh, no? Uh, no? There's like six of them. Which one do I click? <laughs> no, there are no ads. That was a deep wire. I got an ad blocker. I'm not chilling. Ain't no bitch. Um, so basically what you do is you're kind of playing in the real world. You can collect real items and you're like in your AI, basically mm -hmm. in your world. Um, and you can build things. You can build, they show like a tree house um, on the page. They show like really cool they have like their cats and their pigs and all their stuff. So, uh, yeah. And the nether people, what are they called? Mm, the Enderman? Can, yeah, That's Enderman. Right. Yeah, yeah. So, uh, everything will be kind of in the real world. Yeah. So, the only thing I have to say with this is like, it sounds lofty because, like, you know, in Minecraft, you can, like, I can cut down that tree by punching it, right? You gotta well, go punch that, that actual that tree. tree. Down? No, 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 but like, let's say I like cut, I cut a tree down in the virtual escape. How does it remember that that tree's gone forever? No, so it's not like a real tree. It's their, it's their fake Minecraft trees. So it doesn't like convert real things into fake trees. No, to, right, exactly. Okay, okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. No, that, make, that makes more sense because I'm just like, man, that'd be a lot of like keeping track of every tree Everything. and every user and what they've all done and like... Yeah, I don't think that... Know. Uh, I'm pretty sure, unlike Pokemon Go, where you can, like, you're working at, with other people. Like, I can imagine them doing, like, they have their the gyms and whatnot in Pokemon Go, which everybody can go to. Maybe that's an area that you can go to in Minecraft Earth, like, where you build stuff with other people. Mm -hmm. But I'm going to say it's kind of, like, for the most part... Well, I see that here, too. Like, I see, like, a bunch of kids, like, working on, like, a sculpture together and one of that... Yeah, yeah that's right. in like a park, and it in looks park, like in yeah. the back too. There's like a light shooting from one of the right some towers. Sort of like it's like a village hut or something. Yeah. yeah, 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 yeah. And so probably this little area you can work with other people, and that's how they're able to do like what you just said and remember where everything is and what people have done, and that's probably easier on their their servers and whatnot. Yeah, no, it'll be very interesting to see it come out. I, like, I will definitely play it when it comes out. And it'll be just like Pokemon Go. And I'll still yeah. Uh, for, <laughs> for years. And, uh, yeah. Yeah. Uh, though, People you still know, play like, Pokemon yeah, Go. Yeah, I was about to say, Pokemon Go is still popular. And they have, like, I don't know, like, three or four generations worth of Pokemon. I know. Right we're now. so behind. Uh, yeah. We, and, like, they do our the good friends. Do, like, legendaries and shit. Yeah, our good friends Adam and Reba still play, I think. So... Yeah. It, people yeah, are still yeah, doing fine, it. Yeah. yeah. I think one of the complaints some of my friends had when I brought this up to them was, I mean, you have to use data. You have to, I mean, if you're going to build stuff where you got to be in one spot probably for a little Did bit. You see, um, this might be on your hot cake list, but uh, Elon Musk sending up the satellites. No. You send it up satellites so you can get like a... This is all my hotcakes. <laughs> yeah. Um, he, he, he announced the plan, and I don't have the details, so it's not hotcakes, but he announced the plan to send up like something like 150 satellites to add to some satellite network huh. so that he can beam internet to the surface of the planet for everybody. Nice. Like, okay. like the plot of uh, The Kingsman. Right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, something like that. So that's pretty cool. Yeah, uh, Elon Musk. So, if anybody wants to, but fuck a princess. That is also in the Kingsman, there. everybody. Kingsman. Yeah. Uh, but yeah. Uh, what what were we talking about? Oh yeah, yeah, data. <laughs> that's why we brought it up. Because yeah, yeah, you will need to use data and stuff like that for this. Data prices are becoming cheaper every day, though. And then once something like that happens, so that won't be an issue. Uh, it's just a oh, once Elon Musk gets to gets on his his shit, his right. bullshit. Exactly. Like, like once he does it, like that's the whole thing about. Now we're off on a little tangent about it, right? But the whole thing about Elon Musk's companies is that, uh, like, I don't think his product is going to be the end all be all solution. 
but it's a but good he's start. But going to lower the price of data yeah. drastically by doing it because people will compete. New technologies will advance. It's the same thing like half the technologies we use every day came because somebody tried to go to the moon, right? NASA, right? Mm-hmm. You know, so it's like the same thing. It's like somebody tries to do something and we get a ton of benefits from it. And that's all he's trying to do. He's just trying to spark stuff left and right. Right. You know? Like mm-hmm. I think batteries have gotten better since Tesla became a thing. Yeah. They, they have their solar powered roof, right? Yeah, and they've and gotten solar better. Have been, like way better. Yeah. Because of it. So, you know, everything's getting better. Yeah, exactly. But so data's not, not an issue. Yeah. So we're so really excited. Said that, tell them to go to hell. <laughs> She's listening. <laughs> Go to hell. Uh, so yeah, uh, but anyways, uh, Minecraft Earth, Earth, we're really excited about it. We should probably get back into Pokemon Go, but let's move on in our hotcakes. Like I said, we've got so much shit to cover. Disenchantment, the TV show on Netflix with Abby Jacobson and I believe Eric Andre's in it. Uh, it's a cartoon. Oh, yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah, season little, two uh, is coming. Black Demon. Yeah. Um, well, yeah. Do, yeah. It. Do, yeah. It, do it, do it, do it, do it, do it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's yeah. yeah. one of my... I really like the show. Um, and it's coming back September like, 20th. It's the Futurama people, right? It's the Futurama yeah. people. And it's so good. I mean, I, I think it's really good. I think that hopefully... So, Abby Jacobson doesn't have a lot of experience, I think, in doing voiceovers. So that's kind of my only complaint, but I think the story is really good, and I'm excited to find out where where they're going after the season, because she kind of, uh, at the end of the first season, she's kind of removed from the kingdom. Yeah. So how's she getting back? Well, three watches, I can't remember exactly where it, it, it left off, but... Yeah, yeah I don't want to no, ruin it, but that's not really ruined. I mean, it's a cartoon. Yeah. So... It's good. Yeah. Uh, I definitely yeah, recommend let's, it. Let's, yeah, let's look forward to that for sure. Yeah, exactly. So that's September 20th of this year. Awesome, awesome. Um, we can skip ahead to another cartoon that... Well, coming back to you. It's probably more appropriate to put it in the next season. Yeah, time. right next to each other. Uh, Rick and Morty season four. What, what? What, 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 dub, dub. Yeah, we're probably all fans of Rick and Morty. Every single one of us. Pretend like you're not or whatever. Get the it's fuck out. Show. Um, and yeah, they've been gone for what, two years? Or has it been I have no three idea. Years? Hopefully this season is uh, really good compared to the last show that was off for two years yeah. and then came back and, like, for six episodes. The whole episodes. story was like, they were like, oh yeah, like we're, uh, you know, kind of just doing this thing because it's fun. But everybody apparently really loves it. Yeah, and everybody uh, so I like think, like they were like they wanted to work on other things and do other. Like, yeah, this is not supposed to be their. Main and this game. like remind. I think that this is a great example of creators doing what they like to do and not letting the fans hold them hostage because you know a lot of right exactly those like exactly. shitty people were like no you gotta come out with stuff this is our show oh, I haven't had my dick touched ever. That's ninety percent of our audience. Yeah. Well, out of the ten people, the ten trillion people, yeah. I mean. Yeah. That's a lot of trillions. <laughs> yeah. Uh, but yeah, so we're super excited that Rick and Morty season four is coming back. It's coming back in November of this year. Um, babe, do you remember where we live off in? season i do not remember at all i remember you know some highlights from things but i don't remember what the end yeah was last that. season uh was when we had pickle rick oh yeah yeah and that. when they did like the mad max style universe thing uh let's see what's the end uh yeah no i have no idea yeah i don't remember We'll watch it. We'll watch them all again. Yeah, we should. We'll watch them all again. Well, how could I not will... remember everything? Well, because the end of season two was pretty good, but then they, like, went off that pretty quick, right? So. Yeah, because he's, like, in jail or something. Yeah. Yeah, it was in 2017 was the last season. So, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, so it has been a very long time, but November 2019 is coming back out, guys. Yeah. November 2019. Check um. it. Out. Yeah, another really cool Rick and Morty news is that they're so I don't know if you know this, dear, but they've been coming out with a Rick and Morty and D and D comic book, which mm-hmm. is supposed to be really good. Either it's a comic book or it's actually like a supplemental like D and D campaign. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, but they're actually now coming out with uh, a Rick and Morty D and D tabletop adventure. 
Um, so, and that was announced last week, I believe. Um, and it's supposed to be coming out uh, September 18th. So, Ooh. that's super cool. I really want to do that. I think that we could convince Richard and Jenny to play more D&D with us if uh, Rick and Morty was involved. Yeah, yeah. No, they, they're definitely fans, so... Uh, yeah, no, I'm excited about it. We'll talk about it more. We should do a whole Rick and Morty episode yeah. um, once. Uh, maybe right before it comes out. Yeah, for yeah. sure. And I think the other thing that I'm thinking is, so right now in the real t- real time is the D&D Live 2019, The Descent, uh, which is like a, a thing that they're doing in LA where basically it's an event that gives... Uh, that has like all these real play Dungeons, Dungeons and Dragons like podcast people and Twitch streamers and all that jazz yeah. playing new D and D storylines. So I'm wondering if this is one of the things that they're going to be playing. Um, Probably. Yeah. So it'd be nice once kind of more information comes out. We'll we'll talk about it. Yeah, sounds good. Okay, what else is coming out new? Okay, so we got new trailers of some spooky movies. One of them being... Yeah, it's like, is this just like the right time to start releasing trailers for movies that are... Yeah, out, that are coming out. October-ish time frame. Right, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah exactly. Uh, or September-y kind of time frame. So one of them being It Chapter 2. And I have a deep connection with Stephen King's It. Because... When I was six years old, my brother, Richard, looking at you, buddy, made me, either it was Richard or Alex, I don't know, I'm thinking about it, or maybe it was Matt, his best friend, but they made me sit down and watch it at the age of six years old, the one with Tim Curry, and it was absolutely terrifying, and I had a thing against clowns ever since, but as I grew up, I really started to appreciate it. And uh, now that they've redone it, I thought the first it was so good. Are you listening? Are you watching the trailer right now? Um, yeah, no, I'm actually looking at uh, the cast. Yeah, yeah. Because... Did you see? There's like the I, I posted a link. Well, yeah. Okay, so I think for everybody, the cast on this is pretty all star. They're so good. Um, the cast is so great. On yeah, the... Bill Hader's in it, who we've been talking about. Yeah. Did you see the much. link which uh, shows up, which shows the con- like? one versus one like the adults versus the kids like what they look like now i posted that link so that you can have it because so for the main for bill they have james mcavoy who is from fucking like x-men and um wanted and all those like he's so great i love james mcavoy so he's playing bill and then for eddie we have somebody i don't really know this guy, um, James Ranson, but they look exactly the same. Oh, he was in The Wire, so that's pretty impressive. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But yeah, Richie, uh, who's the kid from, who the kid version is the kid from... Uh, Stranger, Stranger Things, Things. So yeah. Finn, Hader. yeah. Yeah. Finn Wolfhard. Who is the guy from Barry. Barry! Yeah, in SNL, literally everything. I love Bill Hader. Um, you have, for Beverly, we have Jessica Chastain, who's taking over as Beverly Marsh, and she's so great. I mean, Jessica Chastain is, like, an award-winning actress, so I'm very excited. And you see her in the trailer. She has actually a big speaking kind of role in the trailer, um, so I definitely recommend everybody watching that. You have Stan, who is played... By Andy Bean, which I don't really, I haven't really heard of him very much. But Stan's role in the in Chapter 2 is a little bit more limited if you've seen the first and if you've read the book. Uh, ben is getting his hot makeover and is playing, uh, is being played by Jay Ryan. And he looking hot. And then for Mike, we have Isaiah Mustafa, who is aka known as the Old Spice Guy. So, Old Spice Guy. Everybody got their, like, super hot glam, like, glow-up moments with all these actors. Because, literally, there's not an unattractive one. Well, yeah, and it's super unrealistic. To <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. It'll, be, it'll be super interesting to yeah. uh, to see it. I thought they, like, in the last movie, don't they have the older versions? Like, those people? No. Oh, okay. No, they don't. 
they don't have them. But we already see, like, in the trailer, we're getting really into Chapter 2, which some of the aspects we didn't get in the original. Like, they're, they're already kind of hinting to more of Beverly's, like, abusive relationship. There's supposed to be a lot of... Um, uh, homophobic it's not necessarily they're being homophobic but the town was homophobic so they're bringing that in and having that aspect to the story in chapter two which they did not have in the original version and you're getting a little bit of that like I know the director specifically said that they're gonna add that to chapter two which I think is great I think that that is something that definitely needs to be said especially if it's in the book um but you're getting like all these like really great aspects of the original mm. it chapter two movie and then you're getting i mean in the trailer you see that the kid actors are coming back and they're being featured more in this film too so that's exciting because i think the the child cast was so well casted and i think that they acted really well in that Right, yeah, of course, yeah. So, yeah, no, I, I think it'll be good. I'll, I mean, we'll definitely see it, right? So Absolutely. We like, we like scary movies. Yeah. Uh, I've been, for years, wishing that a better scary movie would come out. Uh, I think it was pretty good. Uh, I think this was yeah. good, too. Uh, I think that it was great. It, it was really like, scary. The problem with scary movies today is that, like, they look too real. Right, so it doesn't seem realistic. Right, none of it seems realistic. Nothing's, it, none of it ever is scary because it's like, I'm look, I'm waiting for like a realistic feeling, like maybe slasher movie where you could feel like somebody could snatch you right out of the parking lot. Of the movie, yeah, right? yeah. Uh, I'll say like we should do like a scary movie theme one of these times because I love horror and I love. Like, 90s slasher films are my jam, or 80s slasher films are my jam. Like, all of it. I loved that era of horror, and it it really shaped who I am. So, I, I would love to see us get more into that. I'm tired of exorcism films. Right, and that's because, like, exorcisms are, like... Like, everything has to be either, like, some monster or demon, which, mm-hmm. again, unrealistic good shit. Yeah. Or, you know, like, where it's, like, just, like, the crazed serial killer guy I mean, like, who's, the like, is so spooky right. because you don't know. Is he, like, fucked up? Like, demon? Babe, you should write or, the story. You know, write it. Is he just, like, a uh, crazy dude? You don't know? Uh, but, yeah, speaking of Child's Play also. Yeah, the new trailer yeah, for that, that came there. out. Yeah. Um, and I don't know if you know this, babe, but did you know that Mark Hamill is doing the voice of Chucky? Yeah, didn't he do the voice of Chucky before? No. Yeah, I don't, I don't think so. Yeah. Damn, I don't know that. Yeah, Mark Hamill, I've read this somewhere, but Mark Hamill is like the most prolific voice actor of all time. Yeah, we definitely have said that on this podcast. This is a Mark Hamill podcast. Yeah, uh, if Mark you don't Hamill. like Mark Hamill, get the fuck out. Yeah. But yeah, uh, you know, the the thing, like, so he'll, he'll do a great job with that voice. Yeah, sure. absolutely. Um, so the trailer, kind of, we're getting the first look at what the story is about. Because a possessed doll... I mean, can only go so far. I don't think we needed another movie like that. Right, they had but, a bunch of movies. On exactly, them. but it looks like they're taking that and they're turning it into a smart house. Right, this is kind a of new possession. Thing, right. Yes, it's new, but with the same Chucky idea. Like they're still Chucky, and but it's all connected to this buddy um, world, this buddy smart world. Right, right. So what I'm so it's like they like, came out with an Alexa doll. If you had to tell the origin story of how like something like this happened now versus how they probably told it, you know, like whenever the it came 80s, out. In the 80s, 90s, yeah. yeah. It's like, could be realistic that we could flip a switch on some smart doll, the mm-hmm. AI goes crazy and starts start killing everybody. It's basically the AI, I think it's the AI goes crazy, where in the original, yeah. I mean, we don't know this for certain, but in the original, the, yeah, it was the spirit of an ex-convict uh, possessed mm-hmm. the doll. Yeah, okay. So, um, so now it seems more like the AI is on the fritz. So in the trailer, you're seeing like all these different things, like, it's like a nest, like the thermometer, the right, thermostat, right, right. like that. goes and up like, really uh, high. You know, like he's got the camera, and like somebody's looking through the camera, like they pull it up on their phone, right? So like you know, think like, oh yeah, I got like a little dog, I'm gonna keep an eye on my baby, right, or my kid. Yeah. You know, a nanny cam thing is involved. Like yeah, there's all sorts drones. Of stuff. So what I'm thinking is that, and you know, 
I don't know that the, the trailer didn't allude to this 100%. And we'll see. But, like, so if it's, like, the AI goes crazy from the smart home, downloads itself to this doll, and then we can have, like, future movies where somebody gets this doll. I think that's actually... Adds it to their network, right? Yeah. And the AI starts going crazy again. again. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Well, so, and let's talk, like, briefly about the cast, too. I mean, so we have Aubrey Plaza. Right. It, it, April Ludgate, and she's so good already. Like, I don't think I've ever, like, Aubrey Plaza usually plays the, um, I forgot what that, like, stereotype is, but it's, like, basically the pretty girl that's also weird, like, that kind of character trope, and now she's playing a mom. So that's kind of a cool uh, character to see her in. Um, and then the little boy looks really great. Oh, and it has um, the guy from Atlanta. I can never remember his Mark Hamill did not do the voice of Chucky before. In the original? Movie. Yeah, I didn't think so. Yeah, yeah. It was uh, Brad Dourif. I don't know who that is. I don't know Oh, yeah. I've never heard so, that name before. Oh, yeah, but it has cool. Brian Tyree Henry in it as well from Atlanta. We've talked about him before. Yeah, we really like the show We Atlanta. love the show. I don't know where the show's at, but I would be interested in we should, that, yeah, we should go back and, but anyways. yeah, we should go back and watch that. Um, so yeah, he's in it and he's the police officer. So that's really like a cool role for him to be in. I'm just, I'm really excited. We're going to see this film too. Um, I think it looks good. I think Chucky looks scary. Yeah. Um, yeah. From I, what we've seen. Right. I think that that's one of the benefits of CGI. So here's the thing. Scary movies, right? So yeah. Chucky. Should be CGI and it'll look better, mm-hmm. right? Oh, but guess but what? Like, he's not. He's, he's not, not CGI. CGI. No, they use actual like animatronics for it. They're bringing that right. back in well, FX, so, and then which they is probably cool. Probably did that, and then they mixed it. Like you know, there's like some they appropriate did. blend Those. where yeah. you can kind of make it like it's better than like the old version. I mean, that's technically what they were doing the in like version. Jurassic Park, and that's why it was so good. Yeah. But what's not better than the old version? Yeah, it's like um, so in the the new It movie, the one that's already out, the the remake one, right at the end, where it becomes like that big demon thing. They never did that in all It. They just sort of like, ooh, spooky. Yeah, Tim Curry is just kind of like, yeah, like fucking around and right. being all weird clown. And that was better. I than, yeah, I think just revealing this big monster thing that looks yeah. Totally unrealistic and was all CGI. Yeah, but well, he was a spider, and in the original, it he was a spider too. Yeah, we Those need to go back and watch those films again as well. Yeah, because uh, yeah, I'm pretty sure they did some weird shit with Tim Curry in that role, and he did look weird. I don't remember that. Yeah, he Maybe was a I spider. From my mind, yeah, I think he did because yeah. Tim Curry in that role is so spooky. Don't but like yes, uh, I think yeah, like you know, there are some good use cases for CGI, but I think we've gotten too reliant on it, and in the terms of like scary things, what we really need is to not see something, right? I agree. You really need to like kind of fill it in with your imagination. As soon as they reveal something, it's not scary anymore. Uh, right. And I that's do... why they've overtold ghost stories because they don't show stuff, right? They just you know move things. Yeah, I think that those are good too i think they have their place i think that that's the easiest way like jump scares are really overdone and then gore has been overdone at this point which speaking of this is not a hot cake but did you see that they're planning on revamping i think it's a revamp uh the saw franchise and guess who is in charge of that Hmm. chris rock what This week was just like full of what the fuck that is actually happening. Makes me more interesting yeah, because it's Chris Rock. Said it. I'm like, oh, okay. Oh, okay, Chris that. Rock. Okay, what? Yeah. <laughs> no, that's what I think. It's like Chris Rock, though. That is so strange. And then also, do we need a Saw revamp? No, no. that's what that's my original thought not. is that we do not need a Saw revamp. But if Chris Rock is doing it, yeah, I mean, you know, <laughs> give him all your money. Yeah, well, might as well. Yeah. Reminds me of this great joke thing. No, <laughs> no, we're not doing that office reference. <laughs> no, shush. Uh, okay, so let's move on to something near and dear to our hearts. We just talked about it in, I think, our last episode. Yeah. Yeah, you want to? Yeah, the tick is getting canceled, supposedly. 
What have you guys been doing? We talked about it last week. You guys could have saved this. Yeah. You should have went and watched it. (laughs) Uh, Because it is a... We just watched, uh, by the way, um, John Wick 2 last night. Right. Because we're going to go see John Wick 3 3. tomorrow. And And also Detective Pikachu. And uh, little did we know that the tick is uh, the Somalia in John Wick 2. So if you guys want to look up that reference. But um, yeah, the tick is getting canceled supposedly. uh, The... Fans are fighting back with the petition, but those never work. So they never work. However, what does work though is so they said that they're still under contract. The actors in the story um, is all still under contract. So, excuse me. So I just lost my train of thought uh, because I burped. Still under so they're all still under contract. So if they find somebody else to take over, the story and the show will be kept alive. Right, maybe Netflix picks it up or something like that. Hulu. Who, you know, somebody who's like, okay, like Netflix invests in everything, right? Yeah, let's do it, right? Yeah, uh, supposedly this year the they're like losing everything, so which we'll talk about in another episode. Yeah. <laughs> uh, but yeah, it would be a bummer if it ends. But I will say, like, the one thing about the pick is like it was never like the animated series wasn't long running. Neither uh, was the original with yeah. Patrick Warburton. Not long running. No. Even like the comics, I think, are just sort of, you know. Like oh, we, yeah. Yeah, none of them are like, uh, we're not going to go on forever. They're not Batman. It is a, I think that the cult, or the tick is like a cult classic kind of cult following. So I think that a lot of times they're really short run, but people just really love it. Like, we exactly. really love yeah, it. Yeah. So. It's a great show. I definitely think it's worth watching. Uh, but yeah, if it ends, it ends. Uh, you know. Jesse loves it when things that people love end. Yeah, I think things need to end on an appropriate monster. time. Uh, you know, things need to just like I think when things are canceled go in this quietly way. into the sunset, not be like, "Don't kill me, Papa." What no. <laughs> is that a right. reference to? Literally anything? I don't know. I mean, Have you experienced maybe. that? Do we need to talk to your dad? No, but like you know, I think like uh, like they they hold on, right? They're clinging to life, clanging. Uh, a lot of times. And, you know, the one I use, I think, right now is a good reference, Westworld. Yeah, you always Which we haven't, which seen we season haven't watched two, the second season. But it should have just been one season. It would have been so great if it was one season of over. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Could have ended on a great note. And everyone was like, oh, man, that's so awesome. I'll watch. I think what that that is the difference. I think that's the difference between a, a series and a mini series. Probably. Yeah. Anyways, um, yeah, yeah so, the tick was canceled, yeah. but it maybe, can still be saved. Yeah, maybe Netflix will take it. Yeah. And speaking of which, Netflix is picking up uh, a couple new things here. Yeah! Um, some old shows that uh, we're all probably familiar with, Rocker's Modern Life and Invader Zim. Yeah, it looks like all seasons of those are coming to Netflix. And Netflix is developing movies, new films, for both uh, Rocker's Modern Life and Invader Zim. Yeah. So that's exciting. That is um, exciting. We it's, haven't gotten so new. Long. Yeah, we really haven't gotten new Rocco's Modern Life in a really long time. So it'll be really exciting to see what what they do with that story. Especially, I'm excited to see it as an adult because that show's fucked up. That show is so fucked up because Rocco is legit a sex sex line worker. Yeah. Sex line worker. What? What? Yeah. How is this a kids TV show? <laughs> yeah, well, they did that in a lot of shows back then, right? Especially like these shows that were—I mm-hmm. don't know who was making these shows, but like the particular Nickelodeon. people making them were like, yeah. Uh, so yeah, I'd be—I'd be really interested in checking it out. Another one I want them to get though, also Cat Dog. Oh, cool. Love Cat Dog. Like, is Hey yeah. Arnold on Netflix? I don't know, but they should get that. One I was just well. thinking about that because actually, one of our friends is having a birthday party today, and it's like '90s themed. And I was thinking, like, it'd probably be pretty easy to go as Hey Arnold characters. Yeah, probably. Yeah, you have a football head. Yeah. <laughs> so hey, we could do that. Uh, but yeah, you know, it's like uh, uh, yeah, they they can get some of those like kind of classic shows because they are losing a bunch this year. Uh, yeah. Specifically in the realm of. Yeah, Disney. Yeah. Right, it's going to pull a ton of things. Yeah, well, definitely. I think our next episode should be dedicated to talking about what they're getting rid of. Because it's it's a lot. At the yeah. end of 2019, like, I don't know what they're going to have, how they're going to make money. <laughs> right, because like, if, you, if you just go on Netflix right now and you look at stuff and, like, 
you know, you might need that little, there's something on the internet that's like this like a little reference map of who owns who and who does what, right? Yeah. Look at the big section that says Disney and anything made, made by anybody who falls under that umbrella is going over to the Disney platform. And they might have like contracts, you know, so it might not be immediately in 2019. Mm-hmm. But give it 2020, 2021, 22. Netflix is going to seem like a barren wasteland. So they need yeah. to start filling it in now so that they're not left in the lurch when it all happens. Uh, so, you know, Nickelodeon's a good good get. Good, good get got. Yeah. They're kind of opposite of Disney in a lot of, you know, cases, right? And so you can get a lot of, like, you know, good stuff out of there. Right, um, exactly. They already shows. have a lot of Cartoon Network shows on Netflix too, they do. and yeah. they have a lot of Nickelodeon shows. So yeah, but they should definitely they should they should double down on this whole thing. Um, double down, pull them, pull them out. Because yeah, Disney. I mean, I hate it, but we're gonna end up paying more money for. Yeah, we're gonna have to buy all these fucking services. Yeah. So stupid. Uh, so yeah. So Rocco's, Rocco's Modern Life and Invaders M. Uh, we're really excited about that, and can't wait to see what other Nickelodeon things from my childhood they come up on. Right. Yeah. Let's see Netflix. what they do. Yeah. Yeah. Um, another announcement that we got this week was Star Wars has um, announced who the writers of their next saga is going to be. Are going to be, um, and it's going to be Game of Thrones writers. David Benoff or whatever you however you say his name and D B Weiss. Yeah, they're moving on to new things. Uh, yeah. With their shitty writing. I think their lazy writing. Their writing. I don't That's think it's that, absolutely uh, their fault. Problem. It is absolutely their fault. What? Game of Thrones is so bad this season. <clears throat> no, I think the last really two or the three seasons so bad is because Game of Thrones was only carried based off the basis that George R. R. Martin was a great writer and had a great idea. Then, when it started going off the rails with the books, uh, it's not a good idea. It's not an idea fit for TV if it hasn't been filtered through the really good book. But yeah, uh, so I think I think everybody's overreacting about Game of Thrones. But uh, I don't it was so. it was always destined. You to said be it bad. was bad too. No, yeah, yeah. I'm not saying it's not bad. I'm saying it's always trifling. destined to be bad. You trifling as hell. It was okay. always destined to be bad. Okay. It's not their fault. There, yeah, it's they just, just they did what they could. I don't think so. They didn't have to do what they did with a certain character storyline in the last season. Like, five episodes. Like, it's just, it's bad. They did what they could. Anyway, yeah. so they're going to take uh, take over as writers of the new saga. So I'm concerned, but I'll say optimistic that um, it could potentially yeah. be good. Well, the I'll, new I'm going to say again, just like I just said with Game of Thrones, it's destined to be bad because what are we like why why are we doing another star Star wars Wars saga and who is it gonna be about about? what's it about maybe it'll be good and i'll be surprised but i'm thinking at the end of the day they're just pumping money out of something yeah they're trying to bleed dry yep i agree i agree um so yeah so that's the end that's That's all my hotcakes that's all my because those were all the hotcakes to catch us up but, so I do have an announcement. Um, I am actually going to be on a live Twitch stream uh, this upcoming Thursday called uh, Scraticus Academy. We will be posting links on social media. Um, it's, uh, they do um, tabletop RPGs, uh, actual plays. So I'm going to be on that. They asked me to join them. Um, so I'm very excited about that. Um, and basically, we're going to be playing some Dungeons and Dragons. So you get to actually see me, hear me play uh, basically my most favorite thing in the whole wide world. So that's going to be May 23rd at Scraticus Academy. Again, I'm going to post yeah, it. We'll post some links. Post and stuff links. So people can, um, yeah. It's May 23rd at 10.30 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. So my time, that's 7.30. So... Yeah. Be on the lookout for that. Come join us in the live stream, and then if anything, watch it later. Uh, and support me! Yeah. Uh, so yeah, so come join us, please. Um, again, I'll post links. Alright, so, you can find us. You can find those uh, links. Yeah, you can find those links and uh, us. And us on, on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram, at Co-op the Podcast. Uh, 
Then you can also uh, find us at coopthepodcast.com for blog content, yes. patreon.com slash coopthepodcast to give us your money. Um, be sh- Share our freaking podcast with your friends and your family. They probably like it. We're, we're charming as hell. Yeah. Everybody like loves us. us. So, uh, yeah. yeah, you can find me also on those platforms uh, mentioned at Jesse, J-E-S-S-E, C-O underscore O-P. And you can find me, that's Raven, at Raven underscore co-op or coop, however you want to say it. Yeah. On Twitter and Instagram, though. Twitter and Instagram. Yep. All those social media platforms where we share things. Yarp. Uh, yeah. And yeah, so make sure you check us out, follow us, uh, interact for your t-shirts. Yeah. Uh, keep yep. an eye out for other giveaways that will be coming and going as they come and go. Yep. And then go also follow uh, Scraticus Academy at Scraticus underscore on Twitter um, and get updates for that too. At S-C-R-A-T-T-I-C-U-S underscore. Awesome. Again, we're posting links. Awesome. Okay, cool. We'll talk to you guys later then. Okay, bye.